Okay, in uh, this video we're going to prove that the square root of 2 is an irrational number. So we, we've talked about irrational numbers before, we know what they are, they can't be written as a fraction. Um, and, but so far all we've done is just said that the square root of 2 is irrational, now we're going to prove that it's an irrational number. But before we do that we're going to have a look at a few ideas that we're going to use in the proof, a few important ideas. So. The first important idea is this idea that any even number can be written as twice some other whole number. So what I mean by that is if I take an even number, say let's say 10, I can write that, I can write the number 10 as twice some other number. And 10 is equal to twice 5. Any even number can be written as twice some other whole number. If I take say, let's say 6, which is an even number, I can write 6 as twice 3. I can write it as twice some other number. If I take 150s, let's say, 150 can be written as twice 75, twice some other whole number. So any even number can be written as twice some other whole number. So that's that's an important um, um, that's an important part of. Well, we're going to use that in the, in the proof. Another thing that we're going to use in the proof is the fact that if you take a square root, so let's say the square root of nine, and if I square that, so if I take the square root of nine and if I square that, I'll get what's in the square root. So the square root of nine squared is equal to nine. Or if I take, say, let's say the square root of 4, and if I square that, I get what's inside the square root. So the square root of 4 squared is 4. And in general, if I take any square root, so let's say the square root of x, and if I square that, I get what's inside the square root. So the square root of x squared is equal to x. And the one that we're going to use in our proof, we're going to end up at some point with the square root of 2. And we're going to square that. So when I have the square root of 2 and I square it, I'll just get what's in the square root. I'll get 2. So that's um, an important part. Or this, this, what I'm doing at the moment, isn't the proof, but it's it's a few ideas that we're going to use in the proof. So they're important. And one other thing while we're here, we'll just have a look. You should remember this, but say if I take a, a fraction, let's say a simple one, 5 over 10. So we all know that 5 over 10 can be broken down to, and it's the same as 1 over 2. So we say that 1 over 2 is in its smallest terms. So we can always break a fraction down to be in its smallest terms. Let's say 3 over 9. I could divide top and bottom by 3, because 3 is common to both of them, and I can write 3 over 9 in its smallest terms. So 3 over 9 would be the same as 1 over 3. So we can always write a fraction in its smallest terms. So these three ideas we're going to use the, in the proof that the square root of 2 is irrational. This is the most important. Any even number... You can't do this with an odd number, you can only do it with an even number. Any even number can be written as twice some other whole number. Anytime you square a square root, you get what's in the square root. And the idea that you can break fractions down to be in their lowest terms. Okay, so let's get back to the square root of 2, the proof that the square root of 2 is irrational. So, to do this proof, we're going to use a proof by contradiction. So I'm just going to write PBC here so we know. So PBC, proof by contradiction. And um, the first thing, well, anytime you do a proof by contradiction, the first thing we always do is we assume the opposite. So we're going to assume, we're trying to prove that root 2 is irrational. We're going to assume that the square root of 2 is rational. So you, know, you should know what rational means. It just means a fraction. So or, so where we're assuming is that the square root of 2 can be written as a fraction. So we've written that in English, so let's write it in maths. So if, it, if the square root of 2 can be written as a fraction, this is our assumption. assumption. We write the square root of 2 is equal to x over y. And then we've introduced two new letters, because I, I don't know what the fraction is. I'm just saying the square root of 2 can be written as a fraction. I have to explain what x and y are. So let's say that x and y are integers. So x and y are an element of z, x and y are integers, and y is not equal to 0, because in a fraction, um, the y part can never be 0. And we're also going to say one other thing. We're going to say that x and y are in their lowest terms. So we talked about the lowest fraction being in its lowest terms over here. So when just this part here. So when we can put any fraction in its lowest terms. So let's say we put, it, we put this fraction in its lowest terms. So we'll say x and y are in their lowest terms. That, that's a um, very important part of this proof. Okay, so now, now, because we're doing a proof by contradiction, all we need to do is find a contradiction in what we've been saying. So, let's take this equation. So we have the square root of 2 is equal to x over y. Well, I don't like that uh, square root 
sign. So let's square both sides. So if I square, I'm not, I'll write it like this, I'll write it out fully. So square root of two squared, I'm just gonna square both sides is equal to x over y, and I'm gonna square that. When we square the square root, remember we get what's in the square root. So we end up with two is equal to x squared over y squared, okay? Fairly simple straight, or simple so far. Now let's have a look. Well, we've got a fraction there. I don't really like that fraction. So let's get rid of that fraction. So let's multiply both sides by y squared to get rid of the fraction. So we'll end up with two y squared equals x squared over y squared times y squared. So we're just multiplying both sides by y squared. The y squares will go and we're left with two y squared is equal to x squared. So now we're down to here. But now if you look at it, well, X is, equal, x is twice something there, x squared is twice something, so that must mean that x is an even number, because any, any even number is twice something, isn't it? So we, we know that, so x must be an even number, because we have x squared is twi equal to twice y squared, so that must mean that x is twice something, so x is an even number. And if x is an even number, well we know that any even number from over here, what we had in the last, slide or last piece of paper, any even number can be written as twice some other number. So 10 is equal to twice 5, 6 is equal to twice 3. So we know that x is an even number, so x must be equal to twice something. And we don't know what that something is, so let's call it c. And then we just explain what c is. Remember, any even number can be written as twice some whole number, so c must be a whole number. So we'll say c is an integer. So we have x is equal to twice c. So we know that x is even and x is twice e. So let's come back up to this line. I'm going to come over here and let's write this line down again. We've got 2y squared equals x squared. Well, we know that x is equal to twice c. So rather than write x, let's write twice c because x, x is twice c. So then we have 2y squared is equal to, and it's x squared, so it'll be twice c all to be squared. So then we have 2y squared is equal to, well, twice c all to be squared would be 2c times 2c. So 2 by 2 will give me 4, and c by c will give me c squared. And now I have this equation. Well, I could divide both sides by 2. So divide 2y squared by 2, I get y squared equals, and if I divide 4c squared by 2, I get 2c squared. So I'll just say I divided both sides by 2. Okay, but now look. Well, we've got y squared is equal to 2c squared. So that must mean that y is even, because if y squared is twice something else squared, that means that y must be an even number, because any even number can be written as is twice some other number. So that means that y is even. So we said at the very start, if we come back up here, that the square root of 2 is equal to x over y, this fraction. We also said that x and y are in their lowest terms. But we're after figuring out that x is an even number and y is an even number. And if they're both even numbers, well then what can they be divided by? They can be divided by 2 because any even number can be divided by 2. So they mustn't be in their lowest terms. So that's a contradiction. We've found a contradiction in our argument. And the symbol for a contradiction is this like kind of a lightning strike. It's not a very good one there, but um, it's more like this. Something like that. That's a symbol for a contradiction. So our contradiction, we found a contradiction as we said that x and y were in their lowest terms, but they're not because x is an even number and y is an even number. So there's a contradiction. So contradiction, as we said, x and y were in their lowest terms, lowest terms. So because we found a contradiction, that means what we assumed to be true must be false. So our assumption is false. And if our assumption is false, that means the other thing, the opposite of our assumption must be true. So we assume that the square root of two is rational. That means that the square root of two, and that, and that turned out to be false. That means that the square root of two must be irrational. So I'm just going to write that. Let me see, do I have room? Can you see it on the camera? So therefore, therefore, the square root of two is irrational. And I can write at the very end, I've finished the proof. That's, that's the proof done, so I can write QED. It's always nice when you get to write QED. Quant quantum as demonstratum, it's just Latin for, we're done.